Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter number 8 this morning. Romans chapter number 8. And this morning, we're, we're beginning a brand new study here. And it's, it's all about what we're doing here at Good News Baptist Church. And uh, here in Romans chapter number 8, uh, let's begin reading in verse number 28. The Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. And so, one of the things that we see in this verse, and we, we, we sometimes take it out of context, that, hey, whatever happens in life, it's just going to work out. And it's going to work out for my good. Well, that's not exactly what he's talking about. Okay, it's going to work out for good, all right, but it's going to work out for the good of the purpose that God has established. And you notice what he says. He doesn't say everything's going to work together for good and just stop there. So it says everything's going to work together for good to them that love God. That's the first prerequisite. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Okay, so for those who are living for God, who are trying to work out his purpose, he wants to help you work out that purpose. And so in order to do that, he has to do some work in us. And that's where we get to verse number 29, which is really going to be the focus of everything that we're going to talk about for the next couple of months. Verse number 29 says this, For whom he did foreknow, talking about God here, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, becoming who God wants us to be doesn't happen overnight. Okay, it happens over a lifetime as we walk with God. Uh, God's plan for you, God's plan for me, is that we become just like Jesus. And that's what we read about in this verse. In fact, he had that plan in mind before you were ever born. The idea of, it says, whom he did foreknow. In other words, he knew about you ahead of time. He knew about me before I was ever born. And before any of us were ever a thought in anyone's eyes other than God, he knew you. He knew me. And so it says, he knew us ahead of time before we were ever born. And then it says that he did predestinate. Now, that word predestinate might be unfamiliar to you. The idea of the word means determined ahead of time. In other words, when God knew you before you were ever born, he made a plan for you ahead of time. And the plan for you and for me is that we would be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to make every single one of us like the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, our desire here at Good News is to help you on that journey, to help you become like Jesus. And that's what we're going to cover over the next few weeks. Uh, let's get started with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can look into your word, Lord. We're thankful for that foreknowledge that you had, Lord, that you knew us before we were ever born. Before the worlds were created, you had us on your mind. And Lord, you determined ahead of time that you want to conform us to the image of your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, that begins by putting our faith and trust in you. And maybe there's somebody that's listening to this or they're watching this. Maybe they're here with us right now and they've never trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. I'd pray you help them to see that's the very first place to start. May they put their faith and trust in you. And then, Lord, as you begin to work and conform them to the image of their Son, Lord, may our lives be open to the changes that you want to make in us. God, I pray that you'd help us as a church to be alongside of our brothers and sisters in Christ as you're seeking to work in each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, for those of you that have been coming to Good News for some time, or maybe visit a couple of times, you're going to hear three words around here every single time you come to this place. Those three words are gather, grow, and go. Okay, those are three words that describe the path that we want you to follow. 
And what we're going to talk about this morning is we're basically going to give you the road map. So we want to help you become more like the Lord Jesus Christ, and we believe we ought to have a plan to help you to do that as a church. Uh, as we talked about in our game plan series, two, uh, game time series, too, too many people don't have a plan for anything in their life. They don't have a plan for retirement. They don't have a plan for their finances. They don't have a plan to get healthy. They don't have a plan to grow spiritually and do what God wants them to do. And that's where we're focusing in on that last part is having a spiritual plan to help you, to help me become the person that the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to be. So we've taken these three words, gather, grow, go, and they represent some things here. They represent steps that we want you to take in your walk with God, but they also represent information that we think is important for you to understand as you take each one of these steps. So today we're going to do just a real quick overview of the steps and the information at each step. And uh, then there will be lessons available that you can kind of dive in deeper if you want to, or maybe even help bring somebody else along in their walk as well. And so the first word that we talk about is that word gather. And uh, it, it represents an introduction. So you think about when you meet somebody for the first time or you go somewhere for the first time. Um, I was thinking about this this week because the gym that I normally go to, the downtown Y, was closed. Uh, They're closed, they're they're cleaning it, so it's going to be closed for about four or five days. And so I had to either not choose to not work out, and that was an option, but I at least attempted. Or I had to pick a different gym to go to. So I went to the Stony Point Y, which I'd never been there before. I'd driven past it, so I wasn't quite sure where everything was at. So you walk in there for the first time, you're kind of scouting things out, where are things, you're introduced to different people and and different rooms and all this kind of stuff, and the gather is basically just an introduction. Because coming to church for the first time or coming to a new church for the first time is... Is a little weird for some people. It can, it can be nerve-wracking. So we've tried to design this service to be an introduction where you can, you can meet God. And that's the first introduction that we want to make to people. We want to introduce you to God and who He is. Uh, God is the creator of the world. And in Hebrews chapter number 11... We read this, these words in verse number 6. It says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, talking about God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now flip back just to the, the start of that verse there. So you notice what it says. It says, He that cometh to God. So if I'm going to have a relationship with God, there first comes a time and a place where I have to be introduced to God and who He is. And we recognize through the Bible that, uh, that He is the creator of all things. And the Scripture goes on to tell us more about Him. Now, in a couple of weeks, we're going to get into some detail about God. So the first thing that we want, person we want to be introduced to is God. The next thing that we're introduced to is sin. So in being introduced to God, we understand as the creator of the world, he has the right to dictate how we ought to live and how we ought to operate and what we ought to do and what we should not do. And the Bible tells us that if we choose to live contrary to what God wants us to do, it it uses a word called sin. That simply means wrongdoing. Um, You're going against what God wants. So if God wants us to do something and we don't do it, that's sin. Him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin, Scripture tells us. Also, if God says, hey, I don't want you to do that, and we do it anyway, that's called sin. And Romans 3.23 explains to us exactly who has sinned says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
So one of the things that we do is people come to our services and we begin to introduce them to who God is and what he wants for them is we introduce them to their own sin, their own wrongdoing, because we've all sinned. And we have to come to terms with that fact that we have either not done something that God wants us to do, which is sin, or we've done something that God does not want us to do, and that is called sin. And because of our wrongdoing, there's a punishment. We've earned something. Romans 6.23 is very clear about that. The wages of our sin is death. And that's, that it does include physical death. But there's a lot more to it than that. It also includes spiritual death and eternity in the lake of fire. So we're introduced to our sin. And one of the great things that we see about bad news is bad news makes good news good news. And so we're introduced to our sin. Then we're introduced to somebody else. We're introduced to Jesus. And what a wonderful person that Jesus is. Jesus is not just a man. Jesus is God. And we're introduced to him as he makes his way into this world. In Luke chapter number 2, he's born of the Virgin Mary. And he lives a perfect and a sinless life. And he does something that only he could do. He makes the payment for our sin. So I don't have to pay for my sin. You don't have to pay for your sin. Jesus Christ makes that payment for us, and he died to take our penalty for us. But the great news is, is that he doesn't stay dead. Three days later, he rises from the dead, and it makes it possible that he might give to us eternal life. So where once we deserved eternal death, he gives to us eternal life. So even though we've been introduced to our sin, we turn around and we're introduced to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who can save us from our sin. And the next thing that we want to introduce to people is we want to introduce them to salvation. Salvation. To come to a place where they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Because there's a lot of people that trust in a lot of things to save them that can never save them. Jesus is the only one that can save us. And he made that very clear as he walked this earth. In John 14, 6, he made this statement. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, he said. He said that's the only way to get to heaven, the only way to have our sins forgiven, have a right relationship with God the Father is through the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You be baptized and you can get to heaven. He didn't say you join a church, whether it's this church or any other church or any other denomination. No, he said Jesus. He didn't say, "If you, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Be a good person and you can get to the Father. No. Jesus said, I am it, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a spiritual salvation. We're not talking about one day you, were, you had this car wreck and God spared your physical life. That's not salvation. I'm glad that God spared your physical life, but he's, he's dealing with spiritual life and spiritual death. And that's the matter that we need. And we want to introduce you to that. Because we don't want you to face eternal death. We want you to be able to have the eternal life that God offers to you. And so after we introduce people to salvation, we want to introduce them to the Holy Spirit. What a gift that He is. And when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, He comes and indwells us and He strengthens us, empowers us to fight against sin, to live the Christian life. And so that's the gather. It's simply an introduction. We want to introduce people to God, sin, Jesus, salvation, and the Holy Spirit. And so once we've introduced people to these things, we don't want people to stay there because God does not want people to stay there. We want people to grow. We put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He does not just save you to stay the same way that you are. He wants you to grow. 
And we believe there's five important aspects that will help you to grow in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, to grow in your relationship with other church members and in your relationships with those who don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And the first step along that journey of growth is baptism. Baptism does not save us, but it is an important part of the Christian life. Baptism is publicly identifying that I've trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior and I want to live for Him now. That my life has changed forever and I'm a follower of Jesus. And if you've, never, if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you've never taken that first step of baptism, that's the next step that you need to take. You need to follow Him in this area. So baptism is important. And then we turn and we see how important the Bible is. We don't just say it on our statement of faith that the Bible is our sole authority of faith and practice. We believe it. We believe that the Bible has the answers to all of our problems, has the directions for everything that we need to do in life, all the decisions that need to be made. We believe it will show us how to have a good marriage, how to be able to raise our kids, and how to live the life that God wants us to live. So reading our Bible is important. Studying our Bible is important. Memorizing it is important if we're going to become more like the Lord Jesus. Now, the Bible is how God speaks to us. Prayer is how we speak to God. So we need to be baptized. We need to spend time in our Bible. We need to spend time in prayer. And there's a lot of different aspects to prayer. And we don't have the time in this. Remember, this is just an overview. This is the roadmap of what we're going to follow. And we'll go into greater detail about prayer and the different aspects of it and how important that it is. But it ought to be a regular time in our life as a Christian. The fourth aspect of growth is fasting. Jesus said, when you fast. Okay, so he just expects, as somebody who's a follower of his, that we will spend time fasting. Now, I'm not talking about like intermittent fasting for some sort of health diet or whatever else. Okay, I'm talking about setting aside food and other things for the specific purpose of seeking God's faith and growing spiritually. Nothing wrong with intermittent fasting and those sorts of things for health reasons. I always tell people, consult a physician before you start any type of fast. Okay, that's important. But it is a, a wonderful part of growth. And many people have never done it, don't understand it. We'll spend some time a little later on going into some detail and helping you to understand it. And the last thing as far as growth is concerned, and a very important one, is church. Now, I need you to understand, church is not a building. Okay, we don't go to church. We say that because that's just kind of ingrained in our language. Church is a people. It's people who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. It is a body of believers. And if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have been born into that body. And man, we are a community of believers. And one of the greatest tools that God has given us to grow in our walk with Him and our relationship with other Christians and our relationship with the unsaved is you right here. We are to be actively involved in one another's life, helping each other, supporting each other, encouraging each other, sometimes prodding one another. God has given us. That's why it's so important to attend church, why it's so important to get involved in a life group. Why? Because the church, and and by the church I mean the people, are one of the greatest tools that God uses to help us to be able to grow in our walk with Him. And then the third word, okay, the third step along that journey is the word go. Our personal growth is not the end goal. As we've talked about, we're not just some sort of bucket that just kind of takes in, takes in, takes in. Okay, and so I've been baptized, and I'm growing, and I'm reading my Bible, and I'm kind of taking in, and I'm praying, and I'm growing, and I'm, I'm involved in church, and growing, and doing all these things. It's not just about taking in. Okay, we grow so that we can go. It's exactly what He wants from us. He wants to equip us so that we're able to go out and do what God wants us to do. And just as there was five things in the other two categories, there's five things in this category. 
as far as going is concerned. The very first one is witnessing. It's telling other people about what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you and what he can do for them as far as saving them eternally, giving them everlasting life. As a Christian, you and I have been commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ to go and to tell other people. Notice his words in Mark 16, in verse number 15. He said, that's Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That word preach means to proclaim or to tell. The gospel is the good news. And 1 Corinthians 15 explains the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ to save us from our sins and give us everlasting life. So he's commanded every single one of us that know him to tell others about him. It's not some sort of optional thing for me. Not some sort of optional thing for you if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You are to go. And one of the things we do here at Good News is we encourage you just to start with one person. When we read that verse, Mark 16, 15, going to all the world, we, we think of everybody in the world, seven plus billion people, and that can be a little overwhelming. Seems a little impossible. So what we want to do is we want to encourage you just to start with one. Pick one person in your life who needs to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, and you start with them. You don't have to start with the whole world. Start with one person. And if you've never really thought about this, never taken time to, I want to encourage you just to stop and ask God to give you one name, one face that you can reach for Christ to make an eternal difference in their life. We are to go and to tell others. Now, when we came to faith in Jesus... The Holy Spirit gave us talents and abilities to use for Him. This is the second aspect of the go. We call these things spiritual gifts. So, in other words, He specifically equips each of us to serve Him in a, a certain way. And so He gives us talents, He gives us abilities and all those sorts of things. And the better we understand the spiritual gifts that God has given to us, the better we're able to focus in and serve the way that God has created us to serve. Because he's created us uniquely. God has not created all of us to serve and do the exact same thing in the exact same way. Okay, You are created uniquely. You're created specifically the way you are and gifted so that you can serve him in a very specific and unique way. So understanding what those spiritual gifts are, are is important. So one of the things we want to do and will help you to do is to understand what those spiritual gifts are. So you can better understand yourself and see where you might best plug in for the third aspect of service in that, or of go is service. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you ought to be serving. You ought to be serving other Christians. You ought to be serving here at this place. You ought to be going into the community and serving, whether it's Mission of Hope or whether it's some other thing. You ought to be involved serving people. You ought to be involved in serving people who don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Service is a big part of who we are. And as Jesus was talking to his disciples, he made this statement. Remember, he, he, he got up and, and began to wash their feet washing the disciples' feet. And, uh, of course, you had Peter said, no, you ain't washing my feet, Lord. And uh, had that whole discussion there. When Jesus got done washing the disciples' feet, he said, I've set an example for you to follow. And he made this statement. He said, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If I've done this for you, you ought to do this for one another. If I served, you ought to serve. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not greater than the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not greater than the Lord Jesus Christ. So if he served, if he set that example, you and I are to be involved in serving as well. And what a shame it is that so many Christians aren't involved in serving anywhere. They're not concerned with helping anybody. He's told us we are to serve. Another way that we go, the fourth way, is by giving. 
It's by giving. So we give so that this community can be reached with the gospel of Christ. We give so that others can go all around the world with the gospel of Christ. So God has blessed each one of us greatly. Just by being in America, you have been blessed more than most of the population of the entire world. You think about the poorest of poor people in this country. Anybody from most of the world would trade places with that person. They would trade places with the person living under a bridge in this country. Because of the opportunities that are here. We have all been blessed so greatly. And when we give, we show our thanks to God. When we give, we show our dependence upon God. God, I'm not trusting in my own wisdom. I'm not trusting in my own strength. I'm not trusting in my own money and everything else. God, I'm trusting in you. And we give so that we can partner with what God wants to do in this community and in places all around the world. Why? Because we, we can't physically go to every place in the world and preach the gospel. It's impossible. We can only be at one place at one time. So what we do is we give so that others can go, and we partner with them. We join hands with them to see God's work go forth. So as I give, that's an aspect of going. Because in giving, I go to China. I go to the Middle East. I go to South America. I go to all these places and preach the gospel in ways that I could not on my own. And then the last way that we go is through discipleship. It's through discipleship. As we mentioned, the Christian life is a lifelong journey. Now, some people think discipleship is just a series of lessons. It's a curriculum. And that couldn't be further from the truth. That's, that is a part of it. It's an important part of it because Jesus said, you need to teach them all things whatsoever I've commanded. There is information that we all need to know So it's a part of it, but it's not everything. Every single one of us is to be involved in leading somebody else through the gather, grow, go. Every single one of us is to be introducing people to God, their sin, the Lord Jesus Christ, the way of salvation, the Holy Spirit. We're to be involved in that. You say, man, I just don't know the information. I don't know what to say. All you got to do is take that little card and invite somebody to church. And you are introducing them to God. You're bringing them to the gathering. It's as simple as that. Every single one of us ought to be involved in the growth of other people. When people come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, we ought to be involved in helping them to take the next step of baptism. We ought to be involved in helping people get into the Word of God, spend time in prayer, fasting, and all these things that we're supposed to be doing. We ought to be involved in helping people to go and do what God has called them to do. We ought to be encouraging others to go out and to tell others about Jesus. We ought to be encouraging others to figure out what is my spiritual gift? Where should I serve? And then equipping them to go out and do the same thing. To introduce people to God. And so the the cycle just keeps continuing. It's not to end with me. It's not to end with you. Okay, we want to bring people through. And so, I want to encourage you just to stop for a minute and think about where are you in this journey? Maybe you're here this morning and you're just involved in the gathering. You're just being introduced to God. And what He says about salvation, just being introduced to the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're having this introduction here this morning. What you need to do is you need to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to save you from your sins. If you have trusted in Jesus, okay, your next step is grow. So in what area do you need to grow? What area of your spiritual life is lacking and you say, you know what, man, I really need to kind of grow up in this area, whether it's my Bible study or whether maybe it's my prayer time, maybe it's just about getting more serious and spending time with God and set aside food or whatever else so I can focus on some things spiritually. 
What about going? Are you involved in going? Are you telling anybody about the Lord Jesus Christ? Hey, just start with one. You don't need to reach your whole neighborhood for Christ this moment. But you do need to start telling somebody. Just one. So what part of growth, what part of going needs to take place in your life? We're going to spend some time over these next few weeks kind of digging deeper into each one of these things. So by the time we're done with this study, we'll know exactly where we are, know exactly what the next step we need to take, and we'll have all the information that we need to be able to take the next step we're supposed to take and help somebody else to take it as well. 